Hello, welcome. Thanks for joining on this modding open MW journey. Jumping right into it. <clears throat> Excuse me, as always, lately at least, uh, repping the TR soundtrack. And uh, Skywind as well. So lots of love to those authors and artists. Oh yeah, sound check, check, check. Let me look at my thing here. Seems good. Hey, Gonzo, welcome. Good morning. <clears throat> Glad you're here, man. Uh, and thank you for the soundtrack, as always. Really appreciate that. So yeah, um, just jumping into things, and I like this thing I'm doing here where I'm doing non-Morrowind stuff. We do play other games. Other games do exist, actually. Even other ones made by Todd and company, of course. Um, not to single anybody out. Um, but yeah, lately I've been in my copious free time enjoying some Fallout 3. Not TTW. And, um, you know, one of the things you really miss when you come from other Fallout games made after it is, you know, the, the Iron Sights. Because out of the box, just Fallout 3 has like a kind of a cheesy zoom, like slightly zooms in, and that's really all you get. It's not really much in the way of, of aiming. And it just, it, this like is a game changer. You know, there are of course other historical Iron Sights mods for Fallout 3, but you know, nowadays, this is what you want to use. Um, and it's glorious, man. And my Fallout 3 mod list is like really minimal. I'm using this and Quick Loot and a couple other QOL things. Um, F-O-S-E, of course, and props to the Script Extender people who keep this engine alive. And yeah, so just really enjoying this, and uh, you should too, if you play Fallout 3. It's an excellent mod. Hmm. Okay, thank you for indulging me on that little non-Morrowind trip. So, uh, yeah, um, Section 8. Welcome, my friend. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Good morning to you. Yeah, people still mod Fallout 3. Um, man, you know, careful, because I could spend the entire first hour of the stream talking about Fallout 3. And uh, no, no, Section 8 says, I was just thinking the other day how dead that community is. Um, <laughs> yeah, good morning to you, my brother. Um, honestly, you would be surprised. Um, again, my mod list is pretty simple. I don't want to like, because I'm not like too knowledgeable about the quirks of... You know, I'm not exactly Todd-level godliness either about Morrowind, but I'm certainly less so about Fallout 3, so I don't want to get too deep into the woods, you know, and, like, start having problems I don't know how to solve. Because, frankly, when I play Fallout 3 in New Vegas, I never have crashes. Ever. Like, ever. And if I do have a crash, 100% of the time I've realized it's because of a mistake I made with in an incompatibility or something like that. Um, which those executables are certainly more sensitive to doing crap wrong. You know, OpenMW is a bit more forgiving. And, and we'll, you know, um, try to do the right thing at least. So anyways, jumping into actual content though, um, noticed last night that our friend Zach has a cat, has added um, mysticism scaling support, which I requested to him, uh, to the Multimark, Lua Multimark mod. So mad props and big thanks to Zach has a cat. And I wanted to just take a quick look at that because I love it so much. So I'm going to do that. Uh, well, no, let's go through the... I'm trying to remember to go through the list first before we get ahead of ourselves, which is actually a pretty succinct list today. Um, you know, I wanted to, excuse me, go into after we play around with Multimark, go into GitLab and try to sweep up some issues there because I really want to, like, make sure issues and problems with the current state of the mod list are addressed and then, like, really dive in full blast into, you know, the 6.x series. And today, um, we're not, you know, we're not ported this sort of current review of things isn't ported into GitLab yet, but I'm going to start today. I'm going to start open an issue in GitLab, and we're going to enter the stuff in GitLab um, just to get going with that because I had a, it occurred to me yesterday while I was eating dinner. I'm like, oh, no, I'm kind of like dooming myself to more work by just endlessly adding to this list, which while I love writing into org mode in Emacs, um, doesn't do the project much good. We have to have it on an issue in GitLab because um, it's good as in my head at this point. So, yeah, anyways. And really, that's it for the list. We'll deploy the website um, based on whatever changes we make, you know, to contribute to fixing problems or whatever. And then I would like to wrap up 5.8 today and finally get those changes live on the website. New load order, um, 
and I can't forget, uh, I can't remember at the moment exactly what else we've done, but some good stuff that we want to get to the users. So uh, without further ado, let's take a look at this multi-mark. Glorious multi-mark. Powered by Lua. Uh, yeah, I started working, by the way, on the signpost fast travel idea. Um, section 8, we were talking about this uh, during the stream and uh, yesterday and c kind of on the topic of multi-mark, uh, I thought, well, we should have Witcher 3 inspired fast travel. So anyways, uh, Section 8 says, if you have an opening, I'd love to talk a bit about what goes into Del Delta plugin near the end. Sure, yeah. Um, let's talk about it right now, man. Um, actually, I remembered you wanted to ask about something. So yeah, dude, let's let's actually talk about that right now. I'm going to actually put that in the list and make it official. So please, by all means. And I'm just going to get this ready for the action later on. I think that's it. Going to, uh, while well, Section 8 types out the good stuff, I'm going to go ahead and get my multi-mark mod updated. Now, when it's released on Nexus, you'll go there and download it. But for now, I'm riding the Get Life. Okay. And we got all the newest changes for Multimark. Cool, we got a settings menu, very, very nice. Nice, very cool. This is perfect. And this is exactly, you know, when I talk about, like, oh, well, why do you want to do things in Lua? Uh, oh, hey, Santa Holes. Hello, hello, I'm glad you're here, my friend. Um, thanks for showing up. And so, yeah, with this, I won't get too deep into Multimark, but let's talk about Delta Plugin with Section 8. So he says, you have an NPC from Morrowind.esn. One mod adds a couple of things. The next mod removes one. The one after adds a couple totally new ones and changes a couple accounts. Roughly, what does that... So you said NOC. Did you mean NPC? Maybe? Was that a twice typo? Um, roughly, what does that NOC's and NPC's inventory look like once you get in-game? Yeah, um, that's a great question, and that's a interesting hypothetical. <laughs> okay, typo, typo. No worries, my man. Yeah, but I just... I, You know, you never know. Um... I'm old and I don't know the lingo. So let me type this out. So you said we have we have MPC one from Morrowind.esm. Okay, we have mod one dot ESP MPC uh, two. Maybe does that kind of qualify for your example? We have mod two. Which, uh, so we're going to put a plus there saying it adds it. Mod 2 removes it. So we'll have a mod 3 that says plus MPC 3. Items. Is this a, is this a fair representation of what you're trying to say, would you say? And without, you know, knowing the exact details, I can say in some scenario like this, what Delta plugin is going to try to do is it's going to try to like all editing one P NPC. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. Okay. So, so maybe uh, we're giving it a robe here and then here we're removing the robe and then uh, this one adds the robe again. And add some weapons. Yeah, so um, this is where, like, the ordering of stuff really matters. And without looking at the Delta plugin source code, which, since you're a Rust wizard, my man, you should definitely take a look at. Uh, okay, he's typing out a concrete example for us. Excellent. Um, while he's doing that, I'm going to just explain sort of high level conceptually 
as my understanding is, what Delta Plugin does, which it will find the same record in each of these plugins, and it will in order, kind of like a, like a database migration, sort of, if you're familiar with that concept, where you're taking like a data structure and you're modifying it in sequence because maybe this modification depends on that modification. Um, and so stuff like this is in your Delta plugin log, you might see like warnings where it's like, try to remove non-existent thing from list. That's because it's of things like this that are happening, right? Like you have an original list, Delta plugin knows about the contents originally, but then things have happened to it. Um, and now somebody's trying to remove something that's not there. Um, so yeah, section eight says more concrete, Sirolis Sakis is from Morrowind.esm. Lafem adds some new items to his inventory. That's the uh, official Lafem armor plugin. <clears throat> Excuse me. What happens to the Lafem items if something else adds onto it or otherwise? Actually, Lafem is a great example of this one. Um, because something coming after it, if you don't merge with Delta plugin, you'll lose the Lafem changes, right? Like if you. I don't know, just change the price of the affected armor. You know, you're going to lose the the change in the mesh or whatever it is that LaFemme does. Um, so Delta plugin will try to apply all changes to the record because what would happen again without Delta plugin is you would just get whatever. You would only get the changes from the very last one and it's just whatever that one has. Everything else would just be thrown in the trash. Delta plugin tries to fold all those changes on top of each other, but of course, like, you know, only one thing can change a specific record, you know? So if I'm changing his robe three times, you know, obviously you can only have one robe on. So um, it's just whatever happens last, but it's going to try to apply it in order. Um, for a more clear explanation, we would have to really dive into the source code of Delta plugin, which I'm certainly um, fascinated to do. But yeah, I'm, I'm a rust noob at this point. So not today, sir. But that's a, I hope, I hope that explains um, something for you. And yeah, that's like my well-informed user's interpretation of what Delta plugin is doing. Uh, but we could certainly deduce further by looking at the source code. So yeah, I hope, I hope that demystifies something for you, man. Yeah, maybe not right. Section 8 says, maybe not right now, but if it's based on TS3, it's probably quite readable. Yeah, um, definitely. And let me know if you happen to do that. Um, and if you're not uh, on Benjamin's port mod Matrix, and if you don't dislike Matrix, shop in there. Um, and I'm sure he would appreciate chats and questions about his code and stuff. Um, cool, yeah. Uh, Section 8 says, thank you. That was kind of the impression I got but I inadvertently set my game on fire a few days ago. <laughs> Yikes. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, glad to have the chat. Um, you know, I'm a big appreciator of Delta plugin and what it enables us to do. And I'm kind of like discovering the new hidden features, you know, that Benjamin has like quietly implemented and not told anybody about. <laughs> and so we're learning about that with like the filter thing and getting our own. Um, I don't know if I mentioned to you yesterday, but certainly we talked a bit about it on Discord about how you can use the filter feature of Delta plugin to um, scan your load order and generate custom ground cover. Actually, yesterday I played around with adding the ferns, uh, Bitter Coast ferns to that. So it turned just the ferns that are not harvestable into ground cover. It works well, and it's cool to see them like sway when you walk through them. So yeah, the final product of that is going to be really cool. I'm very excited for that to, uh, to mature. All right. Now, I just want to do another real quick look at this multi-mark mod. I actually really want, I want to play it. Um, and, and again, big thanks to Zach for doing it, for adding the, I asked him to put the mysticism. I don't know if he was planning to do it or not, but I asked about it and he did it. So big thank you. Appreciate that, Zach. And this looks great. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is 0 0.48 compatible and it's going, once Zach releases it, it's going on the mod list and it will replace the, uh, the legacy multi-mark mod. So yeah, excellent. And so, yeah, I would say a sane default here, base mark count, I think zero is fair, right? If you have a less than five mysticism, you know, like, yeah, you, you probably shouldn't be marking. <laughs> you, you probably can't. Um, so I think this is actually a really good default. Excuse me, five marks, uh, excuse me, five skill points per mark. I think it's a great level. 
I have zero complaints about these defaults and will use them. So, yeah, uh, Section 8 says, I have zero interest in making the thing I was telling you about VFS aware, so the more scripts I write in Rust, the more I think about how much of my stuff may or may not cross over with Delta. Yeah, cool, man, yeah. And just to um, go into a little bit of detail about that, Section 8 and I were talking pro uh, just prior to the stream on Discord about a project he's working on where uh, for TES3MP, it is uh, sort of a neat way, neat albeit semi-spicy, no disrespect, it's very neat, way to uh, restock merchants, um, which is a, a tough proposition in the multiplayer environment for various reasons. Um, and yeah, Section 8 has developed a pretty cool approach to that that I think will work well. So yeah, once we finally get into the multiplayer swing of things, you know, um, that's something we're definitely going to want to have. Uh, we're definitely going to want to have Vidi Aquam's NPC schedules project that she told me about somewhat recently. It's Sounds also like a must-have, and for that one, I can't help but wonder, like, how do we get that with OpenMW Lua? And um, honestly, we could actually... So thinking out loud about that, NPC schedules. You could actually do that right now, right? Like, you could have a, a global script or something that runs that is aware of what time it is, and then sets the actual AI package using the AR interface... Um, she released recently, so the code is out there. Cool. Thank you, Section 8. Awesome. That's exciting. I'll have to ask her about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, we could theoretically do that with OpenMW Lua, and I'm going to actually ask her about that. You could actually use the AI package, right, to tell somebody, not just like disable them, which is what NPC schedules ESP that we use now does. Um, it just disables the NPC, but you could actually tell them to like go home. Like you could actually say Fargoth, walk home, you know, and use the AI package to do that. It would be a lot of work to identify like, where things are and probably would be spicy compatibility wise but um certainly could be done all right so i have a i think i have a fairly weak in mysticism character here yeah i only got five points mysticism so let's uh caps deal with it 50 points there we go i'm a little bit more good Oh. Did I? Huh, so I wonder how Zach's mod is not friendly to cheaters. <laughs> uh, all right. Well. There is a way, though. Hold on. I'll just add it to my cheater script, maybe. Maybe, maybe that'll work. Man, now I can't stop thinking about uh, the possibility of a nice OpenMW Lua implementation of NPC schedules. Stop Fargoth on his walk home. Hey man, let's get some dinner. All right. Uh, should have just... Oh yeah, hey, look at it. It's at the bottom of my script even. I had this thought already. Oh no. Well, that's no good. Let's see if we can just do this. Well, that's a bummer. We're not going to take a look at this code right now, but I will chat up Zach about that. <clears throat> so anyway, though, in theory, you can set however many marks you want to start with. You can set how many you get, you know, per however many points of mysticism. I think it's pretty cool. Nice, sane default level there, and um, you can change it however you like with the neat settings menu, so... 
Thank you again to Zach for that one. Alright, well, I think it's time to start looking at GitLab. Oh, Section 8 says, I bet if you save and reload, it would work. Hmm, well, I mean, it's worth a try. Because I definitely want to see it work. Definitely a good idea, though. All right. Oh, back into GitLab. Yeah, big, yeah, it's big bummer. I'll ask Zach about that after the stream, probably. All right. Yeah, I still owe our friend Simon Prime a look at his Rybash tips. Um, I saw you chatting with him the other day, actually, Section 8. Big thanks for that. Giving him an answer while I was busy. Excuse me. Uh, this one, I think we can add a... I think we determined yesterday we can add a... Needs to be closed tag on this one, because it looks like Danae fixed that one. Uh, thank you, Gonzo, for filing this. The Saplings floater. Um probably end up going into MD's Discord channel and letting him know about that. Um, just wanted to, again, verify it, though, with just saplings and BCOM. This is one I would like to do. Um, I have a 503 page, which, which tells people I might be doing a deploy, which is usually the case of a 503 if I'm not doing a big F myself. Um, but maybe something better. I don't know. Yeah, cool. Uh, Section 8 says, regarding the chat with Simon, he says, it was quite interesting to discuss in depth a bit with a series bash user uh, since I'm probably going to have to start using it. What are you going to be using it for out of curiosity? Um, I definitely want to start using it too, uh, just for like the introspection into things. You know, it's valuable, very valuable for Fallout 3 and New Vegas, for example. If I did Oblivion, probably that too. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just want to be present for one of the streams where Zach's mods work. Oh, hey, all right. Well, uh, I'll help you out with that, buddy. No problem. Let's take a look at the airship because I'm guessing you probably didn't look at that yet. Um, let's, do, let's do the airship. We got to have something cool here. Travel. Airship. Uh, Section 8 says probably going to be my main manager, Rybash. Dude, that's awesome. I'm so glad because I really want to have good Rybash information on the website, you know. So it was like kind of like fortunate that Simon showed up, you know, and was critiquing my lack of information there. Um, and it was good because, yeah, it's well needed. And um, if there's good OpenMW support in modern Rybash builds, you know, or Bash builds, I'm sorry, um, then we should cover it, you know. Um, I don't want to have like a preference for any particular mod manager on the website, but I do want to accommodate with good current information, you know, any tools that are out there. Um, I like to document thoroughly kind of the manual way just because that's what's built into OpenMW and it should be well understood, you know. Um, but yeah, anyways. Zero OpenMW support per se, but I do run it natively, right? Because it's a Python application so you can run it uh, with Linux just with the you know same way we run mlocks it just it just works Todd insert Todd emoji the obligatory Todd emoji it just works um, I use the exe for fallout um, and that just works with wine you know it generally is a very Linux friendly thing all right, so I hope you're ready for this airship because it's pretty cool, and I definitely don't mind doing it on the stream again because it's like one of the – it's – vehicles in general are one of the neatest things to see in Morrowind, and certainly Abbott's stuff has been kind of like iffy with OpenMW for a minute. So 
it's nice to see this Lua airship, and and it indeed is a little iffy in some ways. Manual flight, for example, which I didn't do the other day, I'll do today. Um, manual flight is a little on the sketchy side, but uh, otherwise it's brilliant, honestly. Um, it's just brilliant. Ah, okay, Section 8 says, never actually gotten it to work very very well under one. Rybash, that is. Uh, only having tried for Morrowind. I will say that my my most recent foray into Fallout 3, um, the latest Rye builds for that game, are a little janky under wine. Like the... There's just new jankiness that I never noticed before. Like it'll pop up a menu about... Um, this is normal under wine. This error is normal under wine or something like that, which is a little eyebrow raising, but it happens. So anyway. To get started with airship. Lua, build... Airship. Boom, here we are. Here we are. And uh, I'm trying to remember what the keys are. So we can set destinations. Let's go to Voss, shall we? G is the key to go. And yeah, so here we are. We're just going on a nice trip to Voss, cross country. We might fly through a mountain. We did last time. That was pretty awesome, actually. Uh, but yeah, this is one of my... Hang on, we need to... There we go. Maximize this. We can maximize our toddliness. And actually, this, I think, requires a... Yeah, right? Oh, my fuck, he says. Yeah. This requires a sideways walk dance. I mean, this is how hyped I am. Okay. We have paused momentarily. Oh, did I do something to stop it? Go. Look at this dang game, Santa Hool says. And just as a reminder, Santa Hools has not played Morrowind. Ooh, Gonzo says, it looks like it was going. You're right, it is moving so slow right now, but it is going. I'll chill out. But again, Santa Hools not played Morrowind. I'm working on it. He's one of my old friends. We go back a long time. We're all fogies up in here. And, uh, and so I'm working on it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to break him into good games. It'll happen one of these days. Now I wonder, can I be on the plank? I tried this yesterday. Yeah. He says, I'm on the last spell, my guy. That's my shit. Yeah, I know you told me, um, and I didn't look it up, but I, but I fully intend to. When I'm done, you know, playing actually good games. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm sure that game is really good. So, yeah, just look at this airship ride, though. And, of course, we have the obligatory Ash Storm. Um, yeah, last spell. I didn't even look it up yet, honestly. He just messaged me, and I was too lazy. But, uh, you know, Mike actually does like uh, good games. So, Santa Hools, rather. He does actually like good games. So I think it's probably worth checking out. It's sick, he says. I'll reserve judgment on that. All right, so there's supposed to be a menu here on this airship. Maybe it's in the settings. There's supposed to be a menu. Yeah. There is, uh, he has a readme. Let's pull up the readme. Okay. Um, uh, airship, and then, uh, and then, you key. So here we are.
this is a really cool view right here. I didn't do I didn't actually do this while I was flying before, but this is cool. So you can see the controls there in the uh, in the corner. We've arrived at Voss more or less. I think this is the coordinate where it stops us. Um, but yeah, I can. Uh, But here I am. I'm manually steering now, so you can see it's kind of like it's a little jerky. Um, but yeah, I'll switch camera mode. I think that's a new one. Whoa! Not sure what happened there. Let's go back to this view. Change airship speed to space. Fast. Yes. Take me there. Fast. Left and right. Z and C. So you can like slide it left and right. So the the animations are a little jerky. I think there's some quirks with the implementation of teleport um if i recall chatter between zach and some of the dev team on discord um there's some implementation quirks that are affecting how this works uh let's uh so wolf all right let's go there wolf wolverine hall no that's probably too close bevac helmet helen let's go to balmora uh start travel g and um okay switch camera mode oh Give me back my first person view. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that was interesting. <laughs> so we just got teleported to Balmore. We didn't actually fly there. Literal fast travel. Oh, no. So I'm still in control of the... Oh, so maybe I did something by hitting... Yeah, I don't know what happened, man. <laughs> I think we... I So I guess it just teleported us there. Where's Zach when you need him? Um, and it also looks like the airship is freaking out a little bit. Just spinning around. Oh, no, here we are. We have arrived. Okay, um, get me out of the UI. No. Wow, okay. Uh, you. Welcome to Vardenfell, indeed. This is like, get ready for toddliness. It is above... All else. So yeah, I mean, I love this, and I can't wait to actually have this, you know, beyond like the prototype stage. But for a prototype, this is super neat. <laughs> it's very satisfying to mess around with. Um, very clever implementation, true. Um, imagine being a normal citizen in Balmora and seeing this, haha. <laughs> right? We need this airship. We need airship ports now. Yeah, indeed. Um, for sure, optional airport addition to beautiful cities of Morrowind when. That's all I have to say. Um, airport guild faction when, you know, there's so many, um, so many possibilities. So section eight says, "What's your distant land right now?" This reminds me of the old PMB mod, but cooler. Uh, distant land. Um, you mean like the how many cells I've got? I want to say it's like ten. I don't know. Let's see. I think we should be able to see that here in the on this framework laptop. I keep it. I use 20 on my gaming PC, um, but I keep it a little bit more pulled in. Yeah, 10. 10 cells. That one house mod, mod for Grat Morwin Swamp Trees has landing pads for aircraft. Ooh. Uh, Santa Hools is trolling me now and says, I'm going to sign a petition to make this 60 FPS. Yeah, very cute. <laughs> uh yeah uh so praise the airship and it'll be a great day when we can actually like smooth out the kind of quirks with it and uh hey you have my signature i mean yeah you have mine too dude for, for what it's worth um i don't know how we can like push money into osg to make it better though i don't know how that works or petition signatures um, and it's not, yeah, it's not even just OSG. It's a complicated thing, right? Like, there's a lot of reasons why um, people have performance problems in OpenMW. The least of which is, though, and the main issue that's hard for folks to understand is, let's just look around, let's take a walk around Balmora and look at all the things that are around. We got crates, lights, doors, pieces of the doors, clutter laying around, baskets, barrels, awnings, all these little things switch to VSG. <laughs> All these little things in the scene. It's a very they're very detailed scenes. Lots of lights. Because all the scenes in the game were designed with 
this kind of view distance in mind. We'll just go ahead and pull it in. This was my first time playing Morrowind like this, folks, on the Xbox. And so all the scenes were designed like this. They could do things that are unorthodox in a modern game design where you have to think about like we're loading the whole world at once. This scene could be loaded from five miles away and the user is seeing it from the top of a mountain. So we don't, you know, we want to have some way to simplify the scene and so forth. And so that's one of the, that's one of the struggles, eternal struggles of OpenMW and object paging is how do you take really detailed scenes that were not designed to be seen in a bigger visual context and you like, you know, tone them down a bit while maintaining detail. Um, so in a nutshell, that's my caveman understanding of the challenge. And yeah, I mean, there is something to be said about this though. Um, the air, the airship would certainly be less cool like this. So, yeah. There you go. Working Zach mod right here, my friend, just for you. All right. Uh, issue. So back to the issues wrap up. And yeah, section eight. Great, very, very good point. He says there's also an issue of just fighting against the base game assets themselves. And what is what does he mean by that? The files that come with Morrowind, the meshes, the textures, you know, um, and this is not a, a criticism or insult against the people that made the game at all. They're just not as optimized as they could be, though, you know what I'm saying? And that's why projects like Morrowind Optimization Patch exist. Um, and uh, so Morrowind Optimization, just a shout out and props to this project, which does great work in improving the performance of a lot of these meshes. Santa Hools also correctly says they had to get the game out. That's right. Um, you know, and I don't want to get too deep into that, but, um, you know, but Bethesda was in a position where they needed to make money and they couldn't simply just develop the game forever, you know, and it worked well enough on the Xbox provided they had a magical way to reboot the console as needed, but it worked well enough. And that's, how I got into the series, frankly. You know, if Elder Scrolls Three was only PC, I may not have ever played it, honestly. Um, maybe I would have played it after I got a PC a couple years later, but certainly I was able to try it within a year of it coming out because of the Xbox version. And yeah, big props to the Morrowind Optimization Patch Project, which, you know, takes just vanilla meshes and textures, some of the textures too, and optimizes them. Generally speaking, you get better performance. Some cases, better visual quality with alpha blending, um, you know, turned off in favor of alpha testing, which OpenMW supports. Um, and just other general things, which they describe in detail here, which you want, you know. Um, Section 8 says, I want to say MS implemented that feature into the dashboard specifically because of Morrowind. Interesting. Very interesting. Gonzo says the Xbox version was my first experience. Todd hailed it as the definitive experience. I remember the game crashing and slow slowing <laughs> when you have too many saves and all kinds of crazy issues. Definitive experience, my left pauldron. You know what's funny about that too is I distinctly remember so when Skyrim came out, I had a PS3, didn't really have a gaming PC that could run um old rim at this point but skyrim in 2011 and so i got on ps3 and it's a well-known issue actually i had new vegas on ps3 also had the same issue fallout 3 on ps3 had the same issue oblivion had the same issue whereby yeah your save would get progressively more bloated and it would affect the performance of the game to the point where yeah you're like sub 20 fps even in areas where you should be 60 even on a ps3 you know or 30 or whatever the cap was um so that save issue kind of has plagued the engine you know for a while it seems <laughs> maybe we'll see this feature in elder scrolls 6 okay well it's time for me to lower my desk please bear with me just a moment Santa Hools, my buddy, says, Sometimes I forget how inconvenient old-school console gaming was. You are my PC gaming savior. Whatever you say, man. <laughs> and I appreciate that. I appreciate you. 
Console gaming, I don't know. It wasn't that bad. I didn't, you know, I managed, I somehow managed to like Morrowind on Xbox, despite it being um, kind of janky, as I recall. Section 8 says, chimes in and says, save related issues were why I switched to OpenMW all the way back in 2014. I remember I used to have a look at the ground to save all the time, and, or saves would always be corrupt. Interesting uh, little rituals you have to go through, right, to appease the delicate executable gods. Gonzo Games says, console gaming has its advantages, but recourse isn't one of them. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Uh, you know, I think the Steam Deck is a nice, happy medium there where it looks like a console, but it's secretly a Linux cesspool underneath. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm just remember playing. Remembering playing it on Xbox, and when I finally, you know, finished the main quest, just thinking like, "Wow, okay, you know, what's next?" I was like, strictly a JRPG guy, and um, I wanted more, and certainly was like super hyped for Oblivion. All right, uh, so I think a lot of these, and I'm gonna go after the stream probably through these and mark these close needs closing and we'll close them with the release of 5.8 uh, let's take a look at this one here I think we handle both of these but I failed to tag them with a commit mm -hmm. yeah we didn't um, I don't think we've done any work on this one yet Gonzo says, yeah, good point about the deck. I need to get one of those one of these days. And I will just say this. I had a, I have a Nintendo Switch, um, and I did the, you know, the put the jig in the rail hack, and I ran custom firmware because I wanted to play OpenMW on the Switch. I wanted to play other homebrew things on the Switch. And sadly, I never got OpenMW to work. The build was super outdated anyways. It was, like, based on OpenMW 0 0.45. Um... And in general, like, you know, I could run SNES emulators good enough. But in general, it was a little disappointed, uh, disappointing. Um, and had I known the Steam Deck was going to come out, I never would have even hacked my Switch at all. Because the Steam Deck invites you to do whatever you want with it. You know, you simply go into desktop mode and you're free to do whatever you want on a and can do reasonably on a Linux desktop, which is anything. Um so yeah, you know, setting up OpenMW, you know, it was simply an affair of getting a Linux build, which I created by way of the app image. So clarify usage notes on signposts retextured. I want to say we did this three weeks ago. Yeah. Mentioned in the commit. We still need to download the prep. Yep. So I'm remembering this one now. And we definitely did that. So this is one we can mark as closed. Santa Hool says, speaking of JRPGs, I got to try to get Lost Odyssey working on the Xbox 360 emulator. It's a whole process, like how POTW on CMU was a few years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah um, I briefly tried to run uh, Xenia, I think it is, 360 emulator, because I was interested in trying it on my Steam Deck um, with Wine. Supposedly it runs fine. Um, I don't actually remember. Oh, I think Finding Games was an issue for me, and I just didn't really want to go down that tree. Um, go barking up that tree, rather. Uh, yeah, well, good luck. Let me know. Lost Odyssey. Uh, I'm familiar with some of the songs from the soundtrack, and I love them. So, you know, it's Nobuo Uematsu. How can you not love it? Clarify language surrounding port mod support. Um, let's see here. Yeah, we did that, too. Uh <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll just take a moment. And so there's a con Gonzo says, funny you say that about BOTW emulation issues. Uh, the latest Zelda released over two weeks early and was completely playable on emulator before the official release. Wild. It is indeed wild conceptually, but also the Nintendo Switch hardware is based on well documented. It is very well documented. Um, you know. Um, the Tegra X1, I believe, is the graphics processor in that thing. And it's just really well documented, so it's easy, big finger quotes there, um, to, to kind of get things going. Versus, like, just having to, like, reverse engineer it. You know, having documentation is really helpful. Official documentation, even, you know. The CPU is NVIDIA also. 
Interesting, Section 8. Thank you. Wow. I thought it had an arm thingy in it. But uh, does NVIDIA make arms? I don't know. They could. So, yeah, we handle this one, too. We can put this one as uh, needs closing. Um, this one I needed to look at more closely, too. Fork of their shield chips, Section 8 says. Okay, okay. Interesting. And, yeah, I'm definitely going to buy uh, Tears of the Kingdom once I get a new Switch. Um, I want There's a bunch of stuff on Switch I want to try. Uh, huge, I'm a huge Metroid Prime fan, and I just... Um, I was actually just starting to play Metroid Prime GameCube and an emulator when they came out with the remake, and I was like, whoa, I'm actually going to stop because I want to play the remake. It looks legit. Um, and, yeah, Xenoblade Chronicles 3. I'm a big Xenoblade Chronicles fan, so... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, Section 8 with a great comment here. It says, it's amazing how each emulator progresses at such different paces. I was blown away seeing TOTK running on Yuzu. 360 had original Xbox MUs and original Xbox MUs are still struggling and w at wildly different paces, whereas PCSX2 has been arguably done for years. Yeah, PCX PCSX2, very good. I recently was revisiting some PlayStation 2 games with that and um, very they got it into really nice place um the ui is great really great ui and you know the whole configuration fun of plugins and all that is just gone now and and yeah um big props to the emulation community for sure they have my mad respect metal oh gonzo you never managed to get mgs3 to run well in pcsx2 oh man i was playing that on my steam deck as a matter of fact my friend um the subsistence edition where you can control the camera but yeah runs absolutely fine um i would get yourself a modern nightly build of pcsx2 get like a pretty recent version but i mean it should just work i was definitely playing that one on steam deck good times uh section eight says all the metal gear games are notoriously hard to run lmao yeah uh as i understand mgs2 actually has some issues with the fog in the very beginning um which I learned actually the Xbox port doesn't even do that fog because they couldn't pull it off. Which is funny because I remember people people saying the Xbox version was so much better back in the day. Uh, they simply removed features. Oh yeah, Santa saying, uh, always had issues with PCSX2. Um, haven't tried it in a couple of years. Uh, Eltario, hey, welcome. I'm glad you're here again today. Welcome back. And uh, Eltario says there's going to be a native MGS3 Steam port coming out this fall. That's right. I actually totally forgot about that. I should say um, MGS3 is my favorite of the series for many reasons. But like, I think it like well epitomizes the whole stealth, sneaking, survival gameplay pretty well. You know, you're like in the jungle, eating bugs or whatever. Maybe not bugs, like snakes and just whatever you can stab with your with your with your knife and yeah very stoked for the port i will be buying that probably um and i'm a huge mgs3 fan um but yeah gonzo get yourself a uh, throwing grenades into crocodiles oh actually i never did that <laughs> i gotta try it but get yourself a modern build of the emulator and just you know try it out i think on a decent pc that can run open mw for sure can run mgs3 subsistence well uh and then yeah we'll look for that port <laughs> when it comes out MGS3 has such an incredible and unique atmosphere. The moment to moment of it is unlike anything else, says Section 8. And I agree completely. Um, you know, some people don't like love the arguably overbearing narrative style of MGS games. And I get that. Um, I don't know. Just like roll with it. You know, um, <laughs> you have to do that. Okay. Thank you, Gonzo. I will for sure. <laughs> I might fire it up later today. Because, yeah, I got to like in one of the very early areas, there's like a long drawbridge. Um, and you got one guy walking around on this side of the bridge. There's one guy walking like across the bridge. And then there's another dude like on the other side. Um, and I got to that point and I was like, okay, I got to like put on my thinking cap here for this area. Uh, and then I just kind of moved to something else. Great game. Oh, mad props. And I honestly really liked MGS4. I keep my PS3 around, although I haven't turned it on in a long time. But I keep my PS3 around for that because... I mean, that was just awesome. Really, really great. I have a deep psychological reaction whenever I hear the drums from the theme start, says Section 8. Yeah, I can... True story, actually. So I've worked like tech support jobs for a long time. And for, for whatever reason, I thought it would be a good idea to make the, the sound that it, the game plays when you get caught. It's like, bump. 
I made that as like my text message alert for when the pager duty system would page me for a work alert. Pager duty is like a thing to to page you, you know. Um, tech companies use it, and so yeah, just whenever there was a work emergency, I would get the Metal Gear alert sound. That was not a good idea in hindsight. And then I would later change that to the Star Trek Next Generation red alert sound. Also not a good idea because now whenever I watch Star Trek and that comes on, I'm like, <laughs> am I getting a work page? Oh my God. Don't do stuff like that. All right. Um, yeah, these ones, great issues. Things I missed, call outs by settiness. And I, we need to take a closer look at these um, and find out what's left and notate them, but um, fixed test is another one. We really got to have it. I got to get that Selenium system back up and running. And again, Selenium is where I automate opening a browser and looking at the web pages in a browser, which is like critical for um, properly ensuring page content and integrity. So this is an interesting one too. I think this one can be closed. Web torrent. This is a cool idea um, Erm had about the mod hosting scheme that I'm slowly incubating in my mind, um, where we could use web, you know, web torrent as a and by proxy BitTorrent as a way to distribute files. Um, true story. I was interviewing at a big tech company once upon a time, a long time ago. And I was asked the trick question of what's the best way to copy files around. Um, and I had a couple answers that I thought were pretty good. But what the guy was looking for at the big tech company was uh, BitTorrent. And is actually what they did to internally like move large amounts of files of large files around. And I was a little shocked to hear that. Levitating grass. I feel like this is one probably that can be... Uh, we got OAB saplings and BCOM. I feel like this is related to the one that we noticed yesterday that you filed the issue for, Gonzo. Um, no sitters. Yeah, I feel like we did this by Azura. Sitting animation. Oh, there's so many tabs open right now on my browser. It's giving me anxiety. No, I'm just kidding. Spell stat buffs. Yeah, like all these we can close. Okay. So settiness has helpfully linked to the page here. So we can just real quick hop over there. Is now adamantium armor naturalized. Okay. Um. <laughs> Wait. You're going to have to... You're going to have to remind me what you're referring to, Section 8, but you said, I never thought of it that way, but... It's probably the least wheel inventing way to go about it. Wow, my mind is all over the place here in GitLab land, so I've lost context of what you're talking about. My bad. Files over BitTorrent. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't really immediately go there, right? Like, BitTorrent, that's how I get free stuff, right? <laughs> but it's actually a, a highly efficient way of moving files around, it turns out. And yeah, that's what the big tech person was looking for in the answer of their there's lots of if you ever interviewed at a big tech big tech company they love trick questions like that and arbitrary scenarios uh okay okay yeah so i'm gonna i just wanted to um real quick check my local plug in here open mw mods sub uh, naturalize where do i have these patches Naturalized. Main. Clean naturalized? Oh, did I have to... I did have to clean this one. Unless there was an update I didn't get, maybe. Let's take a look at that. Definitely possible. Sometimes I forget to track things on Nexus. Nope, definitely track this one. downloaded it after the last update so chances are I have the latest one so I think yeah simply this just what did it clean here again let's look at this a dupe chest 
Hmm. That's one I think actually warrants investigation. I'm su I'm honestly suspicious of all dupe cleanings now, after I've witnessed it in my own uh, plugin. But uh, I'm gonna actually put a note on here so I don't forget. Because if I don't do this, I'm for sure it's gonna get lost in the cloud. Um, we should, so we should actually change the name of the plugin um, because we don't name plugins clean if they need to be cleaned. We only name them cleaned in our data if they're just named that way out of the box. So yeah, um, we're going to add that comment there and we will clean the plugin in the data. Uh, change the name of the plugin in the data rather. Holy moly. Don't try this at home this being speaking <laughs> okay and uh, add a man to naturalized all right Two oh two. Ooh, and I'm having a flashback to hacking on the config generator. <laughs> Fuse forms. And, um, yeah, here we go. This is why such hard coded hacks are evil. And I certainly would not have remembered about this if we weren't just agonizing over this junk a week ago. Um, but the good news is I've been thinking about how we're going to improve that and how we will implement proper data structures for plugins, proper relations, and things like that. So we won't need any hacks whatsoever. And the CFG generator code will be concise and boring, and it'll be just a bunch of database queries um, and simple template logic. Cool. All right, uh, BCOM is now with the capital ESP. I think we did that one a few weeks ago. Let's take a look, huh? Uh, plugin order. Uh, we sure didn't do that. All right. And uh, just for posterity. Excuse me. Ooh. That's a that's a capital suffix there. So let's go ahead and do that here as well. Okay, Virus Legacy. Oh, I think this one was a difference of um, what Virus Leg Legacy comes with, which is, I think, caps or lowercase, and uh, the patched one that RP ships, which is uppercase. Let's confirm that. That's 30, no, 20 something no I don't remember A 43 there we go this one's uppercase uh no I put 
this one under player. That's another change I'm going to be making, by the way, is I had uh, Ovirus Legacy under guilds and factions category, but it's actually more of a it's, a, it's a player home mod, you know, so I put it under my player home folder. And yeah, there is uh, lowercase here in the base mod. Now, on the mod lists, we're going to be using the uppercase one, so that's the one we want to make sure that we show people. And it's getting into 6.x extravaganza time, but let's finish this up real quick first. Uh, oh, no, 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 I want the, I'm sorry, I want the e-shell buffer. Really surprised on that note, too. Somebody hopped into the stream yesterday saying they were excited about Emacs. It was like, wow, that's like a hermit seeing another human for the first time in years. <laughs> uh, yeah, Section 8, actually, you would appreciate that. You are a fellow Emacs fan. Okay, um, let's run that. We'll reshuffle the database, get ourselves there. And in the meantime, we can look at the live site. <laughs> Section 8 says, there seems to be some correlation between OpenMW and Emacs users. Yeah, I don't know. I It's weird. You know, uh, the individual that made the better needs, uh, basic needs rather, I'm sorry, Lua Mod, which seems pretty neat. Um... Turns out they're Emacs, you know, you and I were randomly talking about Emacs and Discord and then they showed up and they're like, oh yeah, hey, I do Emacs too. I actually need to hit them up about their LSP stuff. Uh, Section 8 says, someone else was telling me how to get autocomplete definitions for OpenMW in there also. Nice. That's something I'm definitely interested in. Um, and it, just for everybody else's uh, edification, what I'm talking about here is it would be really cool to be like, so this is my, by, by the way, this is my work in progress signpost fast travel mod it would be really cool so i get autocomplete in here for ui but that's just because i typed it elsewhere in the file and uh emacs and lsp together are smart enough to extrapolate that um oh for c plus plus oh that's easy though um as i recall that was simple to do hang on now i'm gonna try and do this so i put it in a third party folder open mw uh, apps, OpenMW, Lua, CPP. That's just for fun. Uh, oh, I don't have any... <laughs> I haven't actually run LSP with C++ on this machine ever. All right, we're going off the deep end here. I'm sorry, folks. We're doing it. All right. Um, so, yeah, I think this is a problem. Yeah, we don't have the definite... You're right. There's no... Unknown type index. So taking a step back, I'm not really like too knowledgeable about how that works for LSP, right? Like I imagine they have some language agnostic way to give it definitions. Cause yeah, it would be super cool to have it in the Lua, right? I got show message here, but that's because it's typed elsewhere in my file, you know, and it would be cool to just have like type UI and then get autocomplete for everything that's in the UI package. That's what I'm looking for. It would be really nice. Um, LSP has an episode when you open it up. It's actually one command. Oh, interesting. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I feel like this warrants a closer examination um, either on another stream or off stream sometime when we're hacking on Emacs. But I definitely would want to uh, share editing tips with you, man. Um, I would like to someday take a stab at doing something in the engine, you know, either adding something for the CS, fixing the dialogue mess, or whatever. Um, if you search Emacs in the OpenMW Discord, you'll find it. Okay, wow, neat. Um, must be like something that um, generates like a compile commands.json file or whatever that LSP uses. So cool. I think I had something like that actually. Hold up. Yeah, okay. Um... Once upon a time, I tried to build some functions into my Emacs to generate compile commands. Maybe this is what you're talking about, something or something like this, where this was using bare, which is like some C++ thing I, that I don't understand well, but it was using bare. Yeah, something like that, comp export compile commands. So bare probably was just wrapping that. Okay, export compile commands. So I could probably change this to just use that okay awesome that's it you can actually do that right now ok 
copy paste for the wind. Here we go, folks. <gasps> oh, yeah, it's because I'm doing... Um, we're not going to go too far down that rabbit hole, but I have a my local build of OpenMW uses a local build of Bullet also. But I have a script to automate all of it. I don't know the CMake incantation off the top of my head, so and we're not going to figure it out right now. All right. So, <laughs> thank you for indulging me there and for the reminder about the compile commands. I don't go into C++ land often, um, as you probably guessed. So... But yeah, it would also be, as I understand it, uh, Basic Needs fella had implemented somehow getting OpenMW Lua package details auto-completed, which would be, like, awesome. That would be, like, a Todd send for sure, so. Anyways, all right. Uh, we were looking at going back to where I was just a few moments ago. Uh... I can't recall. We're just about to drop it. But I want to see the adamantium armor change, at least in the CFG generator, and then we'll move on to new stuff. Or rather, excuse me, not see it. Adamant. Yeah, we don't. What we're doing here is we're excluding that one because it's not compatible with BCOM. Section 8 says, Zach had said a few months ago he didn't really know Lua and has been kind of casually binding in new features. So I feel like that'd be, be a pretty approachable place to go. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, you know, he and uh, was joined us on the stream last week and we were talking about you know the idea of mark and recall and by the end of the day he was thinking about de hard coding that part of the spell api you know so i mean clearly it's probably approachable there i just gotta make some time and do it right and props to you folks who actually do go out there and do it my respect i get to enjoy the game more because of all of you we all get to enjoy it more because of all of you and it's great so cool i'm, I'm satisfied with this dragging this hack along keeping that plugin out of our load order when we don't want it in there. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I wanted, that's right. Hmm. I wanted to see what copy of a Virus Legacy plugin are we loading in the mod list? Um, oh, too many tabs open. Oh, my God. So it is actually the uppercase one here. Nice. Thank you past us, I guess. We probably fixed that at some point on here. So, very good. Cool. Um, and I'm going to mark that in the ticket as well. Uh, something went wrong. Yeah, for sure, GitLab. Wow. Okay. Uh, in the interest of doing a little bit of tab, uh, tab cleanup here. This one is done. Uh, you know what? I'm going to leave that to settiness to edit that, actually. I'll chat with him and ask him to do that and and let's before we jump into new stuff let's do diligence here and let's take care of all of these tr bcom patch has the uppercase random pale loves the uppercase you know hey i appreciate that all right I also wonder how much Windows people actually think about that, you know, because it doesn't matter for them. A Mac to some degree, too. Uh, so, BCOMTR. Right? Is that the one? No. TRBCOM. From my experiences on Starwind mods, I promise they don't. <laughs> That's a good anecdote. Thank you, Section 8. I kind of assumed as much, right? Because it's just a non-issue for them. Their OS doesn't care. Or their OS's file system apparently can care, but doesn't. I think I told you about how I lowercase every mod I install, even for vanilla. Uh, yeah, I think you did, Section 8. Yep, you did. You did. I certainly do that with um, 
games I run on the vanilla engines. So Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas. I have a lowercase script. Actually, I'm going to open that up and show y'all. Because there's like... It's a perilous task here. Properly lowercasing things. Because there's some things that you don't want to lowercase, right? Like if I lowercase a .bsa, well like... We have this problem with OpenMW, actually. If you rename something from an OMW atom to an ESP, it's functionally the same thing you've done here. The master, you know, or whatever it's looking for, can't be found now because <laughs> it's used to operating in a case-insensitive environment. Now they're in a case-sensitive environment. Wine, I think, tries to do some sanitization there. But, yeah, you so some things, you know, you just you don't want a lowercase but um so this is anyway this is what i do for my fallout 3 and fallout new vegas mods i'll run this thing anytime i extract something i'll run this and i'll point it at my uh not sure why i'm doing it twice here oh no for files okay yeah so i do directories first and then files um but yeah anytime i extract anything i'll just run this and and again we ignore lots of things and like there's fallout 3 for example the unofficial patch has a new, I think this might be the ESM patch or it has like a .mpi. You know, you don't want to .pdvs. You don't want to change the DLLs. You don't want to change the casing on these INIs because they might be looking for the specific case and it will matter on Linux and it'll bite you in the butt. So yeah, anyway, that's my little <laughs> yet another shell script. Johnny, how many shell scripts do you have for things? You don't want to know. Thanks for asking. Okay, so yeah, this is caps now. And this two caps. That's an extreme abusive shell. <laughs> yeah, well, so if you look on a search engine, how do I lowercase files? You'll probably find, for Linux specifically, you'll probably find something to the effect of use the rename command, which is a Perl script, or something like that. That doesn't work for a number of reasons in special cases. Uh, and if you go back to the script I had open, you can see some of those special considerations that I handle. But yeah, it's like kind of gnarly way of doing it, for sure, but it works. It's extremely battle-tested. I don't have any issues at the moment, so yeah, snack indeed. <laughs> All right, uh... This one, so we capitalize that. Good. Um, good. Um, solely within the CFG generator. Duplicated Imperial Legion expansion. Man, I have so many tabs open. I'm going to have to... Where, my, where did it go? Here we go. Let's just break this out into a different window. Okay, um, Imperial Legion expansion. Cool, we're only in there only in there once. We must have fixed that in a in a prior stream and just not noted it properly. I haven't been doing a good job of putting the commits, uh, the issue in in the commits. So, and we can see right now why that's good to do. Uh, yeah, I think this is fixed, too. Yeah, fix, fix, okay. I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah, this is a bit of a spicier problem. Uh, and this, I think we can solve in a good way when we have the data framework for plugins. We can say... Not only can we say what mod list a plugin is used on, but we can also say, is it ground cover? And then we can have like a definitive ground cover list for mod lists too. So I hope we could start doing that next weekend, by the way. I have like the data model in my head. I might hack it out in the next couple of days, but uh, you know, maybe we can do that in the first half of the stream next Saturday and start implementing that and clean up that CFG generator finally. So anyways, that's one, needless to say, we're not gonna handle this. Or these ones, uh, because they will be sort of blanket solved when we fix the CFG generator and how we handle data. So yeah, cool. All right. I, I think that handles uh, the rest of the issues that we can handle right now, uh, at least. So th big thank you again to our friend Setiness. 
for noticing those things. Oh, and I keep forgetting, and I want to mention too, I have a uh, OpenMW validator update in the works, um, fixing some problems that I noticed while I was using it. Um, I'm not going to go there right now just because we're way over schedule for doing new stuff. But yeah, expect that on the horizon too. I'm going to move that over to GitLab and uh, have a neat website for it and stuff. I'll probably put it on Nexus in addition to uh, Modding Hall, but I'll probably finally put that on Nexus too. So um, very interested to see if Nexus's virus scanner calls it a virus because people's Windows Essentials seems to mark it as a virus. No idea why. I'm reasonably sure I didn't write a virus. Okay, new stuff time. I'm ready. <laughs> Santa Hools. Uh, so, first off, like I have, you know, if you use Windows, that's really great. Um, use what works for you and don't stress about it too much. But, uh, you know, <laughs> Windows is not, it's opinionated. I'll just say that. And sometimes that's a good thing for people. All right. Uh, so, as I said, we're going to leave this here as is. I will work on porting this information into GitLab. And we're going to start now putting the stuff into GitLab. So, let me get my config open. And yeah, got the diff open as well. We'll open a new issue here. Just another tab. Let's just do it. All right. Um... <laughs> this is why I need the chat on the video because yeah <laughs> Santa Hool says I need a bumper sticker that says I ignore Windows security warnings you shouldn't do that man but that's funny section 8 says sorry I was distracted for a moment but if you have a binary file defender is flagging you can send it to MS and they'll whitelist it oh cool that's good yeah, and I, I wonder, too, if it isn't just an issue of, like, I don't know, something weird with, like, the Go compiler, you know, and I do strip the binary. Um, maybe that's suspicious to them. Anyway, okay. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and we'll assign this, and I'm going to go ahead and... I'm not going to label it just yet. Um Actually, forget it. We're going to do it. We're going to put all the lists on there. Mod edition. Mod edit. Uh, because there is a Starwind mod, actually, I want to add. Uh, zombie apocalypse kind of thing that was released somewhat recently. I know Section 8 knows what I'm talking about. Um, I do want to add that one because just more Starwind content. You know, why not? Love to do a Starwind stream sometime and we can just start a new game and I can awkwardly hear my own voice in the game, which I love. Death Troopers, yeah, that's right. Muscle indeed. That one looked pretty neat. Um and again, yeah, just why, you know, not have more content. So okay. Focus, focus. Where we need to go back to my old list just to see where we left off. Wolverine Hall. Okay, so Wolverine Hall. Okay, there we go. Yeah, okay. Um, Thag. Uh, yeah, uh, Section 8 says, Who do you play, by the way? I voice Thag in Starwind, who, if you played Knights of the Old Republic, Thag is very um, reminiscent of Candorous Ordo. And when I was voicing the character... I wanted to channel Candorous, but also I like accidentally hit like a Duke Nukem kind of a nerve. And Billy and Iggy loved it, so I just kept going with it. I don't know if it's annoying or if it sucks, but <laughs> I had fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. And it's really weird to do voice acting in a video game context. Now I kind of understand. I've heard stories from voice actors about how weird it is to do a video game. And I think I understand now because I had all I had was like my chunks of the story, just my lines, right? So it was like really hard to know what was going on. Sometimes I would like message Iggy like, hey, you know, what's happening here? How am I supposed to feel? I'm an angry Mandalorian, but how am I supposed to feel here, you know? Um, and I also did another character who's a secret character. Um, 
Duke Nukem meets Candorous is exactly how I felt about it. Cool. All right. I'll take that as a compliment or that it was at least not something you hated. Um, damn, those alien bastards are going to pay for shooting up my ride. <laughs> What's his name? John St. John. He's great. And he's also the voice of the conduit hero in Conduit 2. Little known fact. Um, yeah, anyway, though, doing voice acting was fun. Look for the secret character in Starwind, because I did him as well. And I also did the voice of the Dark Apprentice in the Dark Apprentice mod by Billy Fighter. And I had a lot of fun doing that one, too, because I had to, like, go into the mind of, like, a corrupted Dark Jedi, you know, and, like, I'm torturing somebody. How does a Dark Jedi feel about that, you know? And so that was a lot of fun. I th I, I'm proud of that one, because I got in the zone, and Billy said he loved it. So <laughs> it's great to work with those guys. Magic Rock of Margan. This is one that I will admit um, I kind of overlooked because I was uh, just assuming that it was included in BCOM. It is not. But it fits with BCOM. It is by the Duo Dynamico that we are known for working on and around BCOM. And yeah, this is just a really cool one that that uh, gives a bit of style. If you're not familiar with the lore about the Rock of Margan, I definitely encourage you to look into it. But uh, this is a, you know, it's a cool take on the Rock. First off, it's cool just knowing nothing about the lore. Really cool texture and model there. Um, you know, you got the, the Daedric writing on there. And there's a couple cool options. Um, I'm going to suggest on the website just the default one, and that's actually what I'm using, but I was extremely tempted to go with one of these alternate versions. Um, yeah. So the Magic Rock of Margan. Um, excellent addition. Fits well with sort of the improvements to the cities that we do with BCOM. Oh, my. Oh, me, oh, my. Okay. Um I have lost my... See, this is why I like to keep a handle on the tabs. Oh my, what happened? There we go. I'm just going to open it. I also have a secret paranoia about typing into input boxes on websites from work where I had, like, typed something into Jira or whatever and then, like, didn't send it right away and then, like, whatever it timed out or my session expired and then like the page just ate whatever I typed in there eight paragraphs you know for a performance review that are gone forever that's a true story that I had to rewrite so yeah I like I'm a little cautious about typing into this box but we're gonna do it um we're gonna do it and we're just gonna be careful <laughs> all right so as I as I understand it this magic rock mod not really gonna have any Compatibility issues. Um, and we can... Uh, I don't know if they... I'm trying to see if they specifically mention BCOM. Gonzo says, I always type up stuff in Notepad++ first and then copy and paste. Lost my stuff too many times. Yeah, I mean, the struggle is real, you know. Um, and that's probably a sensible default, for sure. Stores that are in a cache, even without saving the file. Yeah, exactly. You get a backup there, too. Most modern editors will do that. Even ancient editors like Emacs will do that. So I'm going to, like, just save this regular. I'm going to add a mod and then save it and then edit it and then add it and then save it. And we're just going to play it super safe. But I want to start keeping it. It's important to start keeping it in here because, yeah, it's just living on my laptop. <laughs> That's so good. I mean, I push it to GitLab, but that org document is not useful for normal people. Okay, um, so number one, Magic Rock of Margan. And this is a lot more readable, too. We're going to have a hyperlink here. It's it. All right. No paranoia about losing it. <laughs> and yeah, there's just going to be a million edits to the description, I guess, which is what it is. Okay. Um, 
So I think that does it for the city-related changes that we're going to have on the mod list. Um, moving on to, again, I jumped the gun sort of on Mines and Caverns because I was very, very excited about adding that one back in. Um, and we do have that one on the org list, so I'm not going to put it on GitLab. Corpus Arium experience is already present on the lists. Not present, though, of course, is the normal maps for uh, the mod that are provided. Actually, this one I think is provided by Vegito. This is one that there is an option for it on uh, normal maps for everything, but I think there also is, um, and I want to change the ordering on this to give priority to Vegito's own normal maps for it, but yeah, he does. They do provide their own textures uh normal maps i want to i want to prefer those over the ones from normal maps for everything and maybe someday we can do maybe an objective comparison and see which you know actually looks nicer i'm just kind of assuming the one made by the mod author is better cool okay this is a really great one um we're skipping over this one for now a kogarun extinct city of ash and sulfur by d manufacturer 87 our friend um but we're gonna skip over that one for now just because of some compatibility issues and it may well find its way onto the list before we're over uh, with these plans. So better Dunmer Strongholds. This one is excellent. Uh, you may know this author from their work on Balmora under Delara's Balmora. Just they have a, a nice aesthetic to their design, and they use OAAB to, uh, data assets. And just, yeah, uh, giving a new life and look to the, um, to the strongholds. That's really, really nice, you know, and uh, a bit more reserved than the Kogrun mod by the manufacturer that I was hoping to add, but it's still fun nonetheless. Um, and yeah, these look really good. And the only one we're going to be skipping, we're going to be skipping one of these. And I'll note that in the GitLab issue. We are skipping the Telesero plugin. Uh... Because Rise of House Tavani does some stuff there, and you end up with a new structure added by this one that conflicts with it. So uh, Gonzo says, those walls make it look more like the concept art. Yeah, absolutely. Agreed. That's why I love stuff like this, right? You know, it, it builds. And there's a lot of style to the concept art that I know they probably didn't implement in the game because they just didn't have time or, or money. They didn't have an army of artists, you know, and now we're here doing it after the fact for free because we love it. And by we, I mean awesome people like Delara 1000. So, yeah, this is an awesome, awesome addition. We're getting it. I'm not going to donate right now. But please consider doing that if you have the resources to do so. Support these people who are working for free to improve the game we love. All right, all right. So let's put this one into the list. And we will note that we're skipping the Telesero plugin, uh, which Delara has very kindly modularized the mod for us, so we can do that. Okay. Cool. So much love going into the caves these days. <clears throat> At a Numeran reclaimed is not a new one. Um, it's a couple years old, but it flew under my radar. 
and uh, in a discussion with Herdrax about uh, stuff, this one came up. I actually saw it in his uh, configuration and got pretty curious. And it looks good. I think it's worthy of an ad um, to the lists. You know, it fits kind of what we're trying to do here. You know, um, and uh, Herdrax had good things to say about it. So it's going in. Here we go. And actually, interestingly enough, excuse me, I mentioned yesterday about using Delta plugin to create custom ground cover plugins. And this one actually provides some kind of a weird grass thing. So it would be interesting to follow up on what that is and where it is. Um, Gonzo says, looks great. Indeed. Sure does. Sure does. Uh, I've only gone in there and sort of on a testing basis with AI switched off, flown around. Um, but it looks... Looks really great. Oh, yeah, and this one's by uh, Danae, too. So we always love Danae and her work. And we're very thank we're very thankful for it. <laughs> Smalio, did you miss running into the clouds? Well, no, it wasn't actually planned to be part of the stream, but if you're requesting it specifically, we can go ahead and do that. We can run into the clouds. It's always fun. I think it's cool, she says. I think so too, honestly. And it's one of my it's one of my favorite things about you know, the volumetric clouds. I think we were talking about that yesterday. Uh, and it's just a shame we don't get the stars or the moons with it. Otherwise I would happily just use it. Or the moon rays. That's not a problem with the volumetric clouds shader, to be clear. It's just a limitation with OpenMW at the moment that we will overcome. Somebody who can do the graphics programming that we need. All right. Um, so I got this one. Adenumaran Reclaimed is added. We're going to just get a preview of that. Looking good. Okay. And this next one up. Smalio, we're going to run into the clouds towards the end of the stream. Okay. And thank you for thank you for requesting that. Because if you haven't done it, you gotta you know watch me do it. But try it yourself; it's great. So this one had previously been on uh, mod list on my website. There was a problem with the BCOM patch, I think, or compatibility with something. Um, but a part of it was kind of glitched out, and so I I was in like a a mood in one release to like reduce content because I felt like I was losing a grasp of problems on the list. You know, there were too many problems piling up because I was adding things. Um, and this having a glitch kind of was just one more thing. Um, but a lot of updates have happened to BCOM since then. And it seems like the glitch is not present. I'll need to play through the quest to be a hundred percent confident. Um, but yeah, so the, the upshot of this is we don't need to actually add it to the website. It's already there. It's already in the database, and um, I played through it once, so I'm not going to say I'm like familiar with how to do it or whatever, but uh, I somewhat remember it. So, um, yeah, I think it's a worthy addition. Very creative take on Mamea, which is otherwise in the vanilla game. Like so many things, a little drab, you know. It's a little boring. Could be better. Not to, you know, talk too much smack. All right, and yeah, of course, uh, we probably should mention there's a BCOM patch here. All right. Next up. Ooh, and I just got uh, some feedback from Matt. I'm ta having a discussion. Again, I just want to take a step back and plug uh, Benjamin Winger's Matrix channel for Port Mod, where he and I and other folks are talking about Delta Plugin and Morrowind and Port Mod and all kinds of cool stuff. If you're not on Matrix, I get you. I'm not a huge fan of the platform, but nonetheless, it's a good chat. And I'm currently having a discussion with Benjamin Winger about the... the g custom ground cover that we reviewed yesterday, and he just responded to me about a, a complaint I had. Uh, so yeah, that's exciting. 
Um, but basically, as I mentioned, I added the ferns in the Bitter Coast into the ground cover mix, and they actually work really well. So, And I love ferns, personally. we got a bunch on our porch. I'm a big fern fan. Big fern fan. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gonzo says, is there an IRC client that supports embeds? Well, so... Um, I, I don't know if this can be embedded or not, but you could like do a poor man's embed, like I frame it up, you know? Um, but what's your idea, Gonzo? I'm curious. Oh. Yeah, okay, I mean, uh, Gonzo says, oh, I mean, like, YouTube videos embedded or Twitter links, etc. Hmm. Yeah, um, that will require some research, I think, because, yeah, we can approximate an embed with an iframe, but that gets spicy fast, I don't know. Um, worth a look, though, um, certainly. This is another one that uh, came out of the discussion with Herdrex. Thank you, sir, uh, about caves and stuff. I found it on his list. And it looked really good. And uh, Nexus seems to be having another day today. Sheesh. Um, a nice take on a cave that I think could be missed, you know. Um, I'm not super familiar with this one, actually. Uh, cool. All right. Just reading. Uh, you can't really see it here, but in the corner underneath my head, there's the pop-up from Benjamin uh, getting back to me on Matrix. Um, but yeah, the hope is shortly we'll have the next release of Delta Plugin. We'll be able to spit out BSAs, and we'll have a nice, easy, easy mode way of getting custom ground cover. Ferns and vanilla grass and kelp and all that stuff. And it does make a difference for frame rate, which is great. All right. Anyway, back on target here. Fadrathem, um, Fadathrem, Ancestral Tomb. And this one looked really nice too. Just a quick fly through and, uh, you know, looks good. So we'll add it to the party. Cool. All right. I'm going to do some tab bankruptcy here. All right. Okay. Ah, that's better. Bethond Expanded. This is another cave mod that I think is a bit old. Um... And I just, it went under my radar. But it's a welcome addition to a setup. Uh, and this is a, you know, this is a dungeon. If you're chasing artifacts, you could definitely, you could definitely come across this one. Oh, and yeah, this was a part of Mines and Caverns until 2.8. Okay, cool. Awesome. So yeah, there's, there's actually a number of cut content areas that JSP25 has cut from Mines and Caverns that is now an actual optional optional file, I think, at Herdrax's request. Thank you again. Um, so it's interesting to see the cut content come back to life, and we get to experience it. And yeah, this was another one I thought looked really great, and that we needed. And uh, as I understand, there's no major issues with this one either, so it's another nice, just fits in to the list well thing. Very nice, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Andrethi Tomb Overhaul. Another one by JSP25. 
I had forgotten. Part of Mines and Caverns and, and ripped out. Made available to us. Cool. And yeah, again, this is just another one that I... I really liked it, so. And let's just, you know, let's spruce up the game wherever we can. And, uh, and this does a great job of it. And that I found so far, no major compatibility or conflict issues with this one. Okay. Yeah, okay, so this is, uh, the next two are by the same author. Who seemed like they really had a passion for modding caves. That's the impression that I got from their work here. Oh, did I finally baffle? Yeah, we baffled DuckDuckGo, folks. We broke it. If I put some spaces in there. There we go. Ulamusa Overhaul. Now... One of my earliest memories of Morrowind, playing on the Xbox, after I finally got good at the game and and learned how to level up and how to do things, you know, um, I remember very early on, one of my earliest defeats in the game was going into Ulamosa. It's on the way to Balmora. You could just stroll in there and you're going to just basically get smacked down. Some, some not powerful NPCs, but if you're starting out and you certainly if you don't know how the game works, they're going to they're going to kill you. And I got killed. And I remember <laughs> I remember thinking after finally after I was able to start having a, you know, a worthy character, I remember thinking, oh, we gotta go back there. And I gotta get those guys at Ulamosa and I'm gonna show them. And I did. And yeah, it was just like a ha ha, I'm playing Morrowind right moment, you know. Um so yeah, I was very happy to see a mod on Ulamosa. Which is a little nostalgic for me. So yeah, we had Ven, uh, Venon's Ulamusa Overhaul, and we also have Polk Overhaul by the same author. And Polk is a cave that I didn't know too much about. Nonetheless, though, very happy to add it to the list. Also just had a crazy thought about having an actual checklist for the Enwaz Guide using... Use, excuse me, using some of the tricks that Zach does to create a pause menu. Ooh, that's a great idea. Wow. We'll get to that. Yeah, Polk Overhaul again. Um, just a nice, tasteful, you know, facelift for the, for the cave. Adding stuff. I'd never really, you know, messed around in Polk that I can recall. but uh, And yeah, these all use OAAB data. OAAB data, by the way, too. So you got a nice increase of the variety of clutter and the quality, frankly. This Nerevar Rising on <laughs> Skywind. <laughs> it just gets intense really fast. Like two minutes, 15 seconds in, this is like whew, good old AAB data. Yeah, Gonzo, I hear you. It's, like I said, it's one of my favorite modding projects for any game, really. Uh, wait, 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 before I move on to the next thing, let's make sure we got. All right. And then in the, to round out the caves edition, last but not least is another one. By Danae, as I recall. Danae and Company. Nexus Mods. A little slow today. Yeah, another one by Danae and the Dandy Daedra team. And this one just looks really good. Shall and Esernibibi. 
Section 8 says, seems to be happening a lot lately. Yeah, I wonder if whoever's on their pager duty, are they getting paged right now? I would, <laughs> I would hope so. They have some metric where they're watching the page response times, and that's considered a defect on the website. You know, if I were working on their engineering team, it would certainly be, you know, to have this kind of response time would be unacceptable. And so I'm not sure. I assume there's no compatibility issue here with Mines and Caverns. Um, I don't know if it does anything in Shaw. Let's see. Mines and Caverns. All right. No. We don't touch Shawl in this mod, so all good. Lovely. And yeah, this one just has a cool quest, you know, in the in the tradition of the quality mods we come to expect for these folks. Very happy to try this one out. For sure. All right, yeah, and that rounds up uh, the cave stuff. Um, minus the normal maps, obviously, which we'll take an individual look at in a future stream. Um, and then yeah, going on to my favorite category of any of the mod lists, balance and nerfing. And Section 8 says, do you think the Argonian Full Helms mod released recently would fit into total overhaul? Absolutely. Absolutely. I uh, You can chalk that up to um, me just forgetting about it. So let's go ahead and look that up right now, shall we? Uh, Nexus Mods, Argonian Full Helms. Full Helms Integrated, Modders Resource. Eh, this one, those Helms slap, Section 8 says. This one? Are we talking about this one? Hey, I recognize this name. That's the uh, looks like the author of the Daedric Mall mod that I put in the Discord channel that uh, Smalio found on Reddit for me this morning that I wanted to look at in the stream and forgot about, and here it is. Looks pretty good. We may be adding this one as well, too. I want to try it out. So this is the one. Argonian Full Helms Lore Integrated and Modern Resource V1.1. So, I mean, this is an instant yes for me, because why not? Of course it fits into Total Overhaul. Expanded Vanilla. Arguably graphics overhaul, but this could also arguably be considered a gameplay change. Um, it's just a silly gameplay omission, in my opinion. Why can they not wear helmets? You know, yeah, Argonians need helmets too. Exactly. Like I don't get it. You know, it was clearly a technical limitation. I feel like they just didn't have the artist, you know, workforce to be able to to, to bang it out. So here we are. Yeah, this fits for sure, my man. Um, I need to check it out locally. But, uh, you know, I think the NPC section is a bit down in our to-do list, so we got time, and I, can, I have time to check it out locally. But, yeah, we want this. We definitely want this. Good call-out, Section 8. I really appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a track, and I will be installing it later. Um, all right. We're going to take a break right now, and we're going to walk into the clouds at the request of Smalio. Uh, because why not? I gotta do that, and honestly, it's gonna be a good, uh, diversion. Alright, oh, no, minimal. Take a break and put your head in the clouds. Exactly what I was thinking, Gonzo. Thank you. You put it very well. Um, but actually, we're gonna so we're gonna do the clouds with the airship. All right, but first I need to actually run to the restroom. Like this is this is critical, and the stream is gonna go a little over, so no worries. But I will be right back.
All right. Thanks for hanging in there. Let's fly into the clouds, shall we? Just had the neat idea of mixing the airship with the clouds. Why not? Why not? All right, so first things first. We have to actually turn on the clouds. I have them off by default in my shaders configuration, so let's do that. Hit the F2 key, click on the clouds, shader, and let's, yes, replace the skybox. Yes, better sun. You wouldn't do this if you're using God rays. Um, and we are doing that right now, so I'm gonna switch it off. Dynamic clouds, on, boom. Uh, just leave all that default, or at least what I have configured personally as the default. Okay. So yeah, first things first, we got the clouds. We have cloudage. We have god rays. Let's get airship. Leave me alone, crab. You can't come. Okay. Excellent. Okay. You. Okay. Um, how do I, so how do I... Hmm. It's funny how we call them God rays and not, you know, sun rays. Yeah, uh, or our light shafts or there's a technical term for them too. I can't think of it at the top of my head, but yeah, there is. <laughs> there is that. Todd rays. I vote we call them Todd rays. There we go. It's settled. <clears throat> the radiance of Todd. Move airship up and down. Tab left shift. Okay. There we go. Dude, and also, can I just say... It rained. Small. Are you seeing this? It's raining. We have a thing where, you know, she'll watch me play Morrowind, and when I don't want it to rain, it's always raining. And if I just so happen to want it to rain, it will never end up doing it without a console instigation. So. All right. Now, let's continue our journey upwards. Let's uh, get rid of that gooey. All right. We're taking the airship into the clouds. We're going to end the stream with a little bit of fun today. And later in the day, I'll be looking at that Daedric Mall and these Argonian helmets. So thank you, Section 8. That was a good call out. I uh, certainly not the, you know, omnipotent all-knowing mod person, so I really appreciate the tips. We're getting there. We're getting there. And I think this is just, I think this is great. We're mixing two really interesting, fantastic things we have gotten recently in OpenMW, and that's the volumetric clouds and the airship. We're flying the airship in the clouds here. The question is, though, we might have to bump up the cloud coverage. I'm going to do that right now. Let's bump up the cloud coverage a little bit. There we go. Just lots of clouds everywhere. Here we go, and we're already... Whoa, would you know, we're already in the clouds. Just get a little more altitude, and then I'm going to try and navigate through these. And uh, Yeah, here we are. We're in the clouds. And if you've never done this, just for fun, you should try it. You know, uh... You don't have to use the airship. You can just like toggle clipping and, and fly your player character up there and, and experience flying through the through the fog yourself. But yeah, I mean here we are. 
Let's, uh, whoa, ho, ho, whoa, ho. There we go. Don't touch the mouse. There we go. And there you have it. In the clouds with the Dwemer airship that I'm flying myself right now. And if you ever flown on an actual airplane through the clouds, I mean, this is basically what it looks like. <laughs> this is basically what it's like when you're looking out there. If you never had a window seat on an airplane, you know, this is this is it, basically. And one, one of the things I want to see here, though, is let's get back into the mist here. And I want to go back into first person mode and just you know we're walking on the clouds walking on the moon is that what they say so okay here we are in the clouds and there is actually a little bit more time too We're on our airship in the clouds. Seems risky, but I'm doing it. Man, that's cool. I'm scared to jump. Because I've, like, buffed up athletics. There we go. Whew. All right, let's... um. Ooh, <laughs> I just hit autopilot. Okay, so I see... I hit the autopilot and it teleported us back to uh, where we spawned the airship, it looks like. No more cloud gazing for us. Okay, well. How'd you like that, Smalio? Pretty cool, huh? We just went into the clouds with the airship. <laughs> awesome, cool. And then just as one final little, whoops, as one final look. It looks a little weird because the, um, oh, I don't actually have clipping off. It looks a little weird because the movement of the clouds is actually tied to the player movement speed. So that's why they're all like kind of going nuts here. Um, but yeah. We are walking amongst the clouds and doing a really strange dance here. <laughs> ah, there's something to be said about this. What game are we even playing now? So clearly you got to try this after building your nav mesh. Because, yeah, look at all this lag. As Todd intended. Yeah, exactly. We're up in the clouds with the man himself. Ooh, wow, that's no good. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, I mean, we, here we are. We're clearly in the clouds right now. Run, just running through them. They look a little less weird when we're at a, a normal speed here. All right. I think Mike has a dialogue bit about this. Oh, really? If not, we, that needs to be added, I think. I think it fits his... Uh, something he would talk about, maybe. <laughs> All right, well, let's try and... Uh, so let's... Let's open the magic diff and uh, we'll end the stream by adding just one more mod to the list um, from the balance and nerfing section. And that would be uh, Speechcraft Rebalance, OpenMW by our friend Efain, actually. And uh, this one replaces the one that's on the list now. That is, uh, as I recall, it's one of the dirtier ones here. Let's just see. Okay, I don't think... No, this one's not dirty. That was the pickpocket one that is horribly dirty. So anyways, forget I said that. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Gonzo says, quoting... 
Dragons. Dragons, oh, they're everywhere. You must fly very high to see most of them, though. The ones near the ground are very hard to see being invisible. <laughs> okay, interesting. Wow. I mean, I could be wrong here, but I think there's some mod potential. Like a quest mod, maybe? Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. So anyway, this is going to be the last edition, though, Speechcraft Rebalance. And I went with this one because comparing to the other ones that we're using, um, in a nutshell, I liked I liked the number changes and the ones I wasn't sold on. I appreciated the expository information here explaining the justification. Um, and... A, a link to the relevant wiki page for uh, OpenMW research about these mechanics. Um, which, in theory, this information should be the most accurate inform information about the implementation details of these mechanics. If OpenMW is doing its job right, this should be extremely accurate. Completely accurate. So, so uh, yeah, a lot of thought clearly went into this. And, um, and I think it's a nice, fresh take on you know, tweaking speechcraft. And I've been playing with it a little bit, and I rather like it. Um, so, yeah. I'm going to put that one in there as well, and we'll leave it. We'll leave the stream at that. If I can just find my... Here we go. Alt-tab fail. Big time. Big, big fail. Cool. Okay. We'll pro I'll probably um sub bullet these with uh, categories, maybe, or something like that. We'll divide them into sections and categories. But for now, this is good. Having it on here in a way that is easily digestible and sortable. Um, cool. Okay. Well, I think we're gonna leave that today. Leave it at that today. Um, let's take a look at our list, though. And I think um, we have some stuff that we've done to the website that is worth deploying. So let's do that as kind of the final thing here. Let's go back. And we'll deploy the beta and staging websites. My good old deploy tools here. Um, yeah, okay, cool. And so I'll be working with uh, Find friends on the review team to get these changes out there. I got an open merge request for 6.8. We'll get resolved. Um, we'll review the changes and uh, we'll march forward in our quest to keep modding OpenMW and making Morrowind amazing. We'll have the perfect setup someday, right? Um, <clears throat> in the meantime, though, yeah, expect uh, once Zach publishes his multi-mark mod, we'll be adding that. That's for sure going to be on the lists. We've got custom normal grass, kelp, lily pads, and... Uh, ferns as ground cover and other cool things on the horizon. So uh, I thank you for joining me as always. Happy modding and have a lovely day. Cheers. <laughs>